So, uh, I shall speak on Bhagavad Gita as it is. The purpose of uh, saying Bhagavad Gita as it is uh, explained that uh, there are many editions of Bhagavad Gita. They have interpreted in their own way, giving up the spirit of uh, Bhagavad Gita. So, this particular name, as it is significant, perhaps there is no other edition of Bhagavad Gita where it is written as it is. Uh, in this connection, uh, Professor Dimock of Chicago University has written a foreword and he uh, very much appreciates the theme. He says, uh, Swami Bhaktivedanta comments upon the Gita from this point of view and that is legitimate. Uh, she accepts that uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is, is legitimate uh, presentation of the great book of knowledge. <coughs> and he also says, more than that, in this translation, the Western reader has the unique opportunity of seeing how a Krishna devotee interprets his own text. So, about Krishna, the devotees actually can interpret about Krishna book. Others, if they are not devotee, how they can interpret on Krishna? Just like uh, a member of a family uh, can say very nicely about the head of the family, how outsiders can say about the family. That is not possible. Similarly, about Krishna, a Krishna devotee can speak nicely, not others. Uh, others have no right to speak about Krishna. And Krishna also admits uh, Arjun as the right uh, student of Bhagavad Gita. In the beginning, Krishna uh, says that I have selected you as my student because you are my friend and you are my devotee. So, in other words, we can understand that uh, Bhagavad Gita can be understood who has intimate relationship with Krishna. Yes, Krishna says, you are my dear friend. That is, intimate relationship with Krishna. And without becoming a devotee, and nobody can be intimately related with Krishna. These are the factors to be understood. So, this Bhagavad Gita uh, was spoken 5,000 years ago. <clears throat> to Arjun in the battlefield of Kurukshetra and the, the science of understanding God is there in this Bhagavad Gita. Uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita uh, is the science of God. Everything has got some science, scientific book to, to understand that particular subject matter. Similarly, uh, there are different types of concept of God. Generally, they take it as an idea, but we don't take it as idea. We take God as concrete fact. Uh, just like you are seeing me, I am seeing you. Uh, this is concrete fact. 
Similarly, a God can be seen by you and God is already seeing you. There is no doubt about it. But you can see also God. So, that process we have to understand. How to see God? That process is mentioned in all the Vedic scripture uh, that is called uh, Bhakti Yoga, that process. Krishna also says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhaktyamam Vijanati Javan Jasyami Tat. If anyone wants to know Krishna, what he is, then one has to uh, accept the process of Bhakti Yoga. There are different types of yogas. Yoga means a linking oneself with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, speculative yoga will not help us. You have to take concrete yoga. Concrete yoga is Krishna consciousness. <coughs> so, <coughs> we have given our uh, introduction of the Bhagavad Gita that uh, one has to understand uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is directed in the Bhagavad Gita. There is direction. How to read Bhagavad Gita? People are reading Bhagavad Gita. Uh, without taking the direction. Uh, this we have explained in the manner that if you take some medicine, there is some direction on the bottle. That this is the dose. You take so many drops so many times, that is direction. Similarly, uh, for understanding Bhagavad Gita actually, you have to accept the direction as given by the author himself, Krishna. He says that long, long ago, some forty millions of years ago, he first spoke this Bhagavad Gita to the sun god. And sun god transmitted the knowledge to his son, Manu. And Manu transmitted the knowledge to his son, Ikhaku. Imang vivasati yogam pratva naham abhayam. Vivasan manave praha manu ikhaka vibravit. So, uh, the Rajarsis, they are all kings. Manu is king. Maharaj Ikhaku is also king. And the sun god Vibhashan, he is also king. He uh, is the king of the sun planet. And his grandson Ikhaku became the uh, king of this planet. Maharaj Ikhaku, and in, in in this dynasty, which is known as Raghuvansa, Lord Ramchandra appeared. This is a very old uh, monarchical family. Uh, Ikhaku Bansa, Raghuvansa. Bansa means family. So formerly, the kings, the head of the uh, administrative executive executed. They used to learn the thesis or the injunction given by God. So, <clears throat> according to Bhagavad Gita, uh, only a devotee of Krishna uh, a person who is intimately related with Krishna, uh, he can understand what is uh, Bhagavad Gita. 
So, <coughs> Krishna uh, <coughs> uh, Arjun, after hearing Bhagavad Gita from Krishna, he addressed him as uh, Parabrahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavan. Purusham Sasatam Dibyam Adi Devam Ajam Vivam. He understood Krishna as Parabrahma. Parabrahma means the supreme truth, absolute truth, Parabrahma. Brahma the living entities, they are also called Brahma. But uh, living entities are not Parabrahma. Parabrahma means supreme. So Arjuna addressed him as Parabrahma. And Param Dhamma. Param Dhamma means uh, the resting place of everything. Uh, everything is resting uh, <coughs> on the energy of the Supreme Law. Therefore, he is called Paramdhama. Uh, just like all these planets are resting on the sun sign, sun sign is the <coughs> energy of the sun globe. Similarly, <coughs> this material uh, energy is Krishna's energy. And everything is mate- material or spiritual. Everything is resting on Krishna's energy. The resting place is Krishna's energy. In another place, Krishna says, Maya uh, tatamidam <coughs> sarvam jagat abhakta murtina Masthani sarvabhutani nahang teshu avasthita. Krishna says that in my impersonal feature I am spread uh, everywhere, all pervading. God is all pervading by his uh, impersonal feature, namely his energy. The example is given just like uh, heat is the energy of fire. The fire spreads by its heat and light. The fire is one place, but the heat and light is spreading. Similarly, Krishna is in in his own abode, which is called Goloka Vrindavan. There, There is a planet in the spiritual world, the topmost planet. <coughs> As the topmost planet within this universe is called Brahma Loka, similarly in the spiritual sky there is the topmost planet which is called Goloka Vrindavan, uh, that is Krishna's place. Krishna is there, but he can expand himself by his different types of energies and by his different types of incarnation. It does not mean (coughs) that when Krishna was present on this planet, Krishna was absent in Golok Vrindavan. No, it is not like this. Just like I am now present here, I am absent in my apartment. Krishna is not like that. Krishna can be present everywhere. At the same time, he can remain in his own abode. That is described in the Brahma Sangita. Go loko eva nivasati akhilatma bhuta. Although he is uh, in his abode, which is known as Goloka Vrindavan, uh, he can 
uh, expand himself everywhere, everywhere, and actually he has done it. <coughs> uh, so we must know uh, how he is expanded, uh, in which way he is in contact with us. Uh, that is the science. In Bhagavad Gita, these things are explained. Uh, so Krishna is at this yes, param dham, the resting place of everything. Uh, everything is resting. Krishna also says, masthani sarvabhutani, everything, material manifestation, is resting on him. Nahang teishu avasthita, but I am not there. This contradictory thing. Everything is resting on him, but I am not there. But it is not contradictory. It is very simple to understand, just like the, all the planets, they are resting on sun sign, but the sun is far away from the planets, some millions some miles away. But resting on the sun sign means resting on the sun. That's a fact. Therefore Krishna says, Masthani Sarvabhutani Nahang Tishu Avastita Parabrahma Param Dhamma Pavitram. Pavitra means uncontaminated. When we come to this material world, we are also spirit soul, Brahma, not exactly as good as Parabrahma, Krishna, but still, because we are part and parcel of Krishna, we are also uh, Brahma, Pavitra. Pavitra means pure. Uh, just like the particle of gold is also gold. If gold is pure, the particle is also pure. So, Krishna comes to this world. We also come to this world. Uh, but we are contaminated. But Krishna is not contaminated. The example is, just like uh, in the prison house, there are many prisoners, but if the king or some king's representative minister goes into the prison to inspect things, how things are going on, it does not mean that the king or his minister is also a prisoner. Uh, he is not prisoner. But we, uh, living entities, we have been entangled with these material modes of nature. Uh, but Krishna never becomes <coughs> involved in these modes of material nature. Therefore, he is called uh, Pavitram Paramam. Absolute, pure, Bhavan. Bhavan means you, your Lord's you. And Purusham. Purusham, he is addressed, addressed as a person. God is never in person. God is person. Exactly a person like you and me. Uh, and when he appeared uh, on this planet, exactly like a human being, uh, two hands, two legs, uh, walking like human being, talking, behaving like human being, everything. <coughs> so, God is Purusha. Purusha means uh, man, uh, I mean to say male, not female. Male, without becoming male, one cannot be Enjoyer. In another place, it is stated that Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. As soon as the word is used, enjoyer, he must be purusha, male. So that is described. Arjun understood him. He is a purusha, param purusha, the supreme person. In another place, Krishna is described as Purushottam, the best of the males. So, <clears throat> Purusham Sāsatam, Sāsatam means eternal. 
the Mahabadi philosopher, they think that the absolute truth is impersonal. Maya Shakta Manapartha Jugang Junyan Madasraya Asang Sang Samagrang Mam Jatha Gyasasi Tachino Arjun is advised, being advised by Krishna uh, what is God. The conception of God. However, we may speculate, it cannot be perfect because uh, God is unlimited, all pervading. We are limited. So, actually, unless God Himself reveals Himself uh, to the devotee, it is not possible to understand. What is God? Therefore, uh, God Himself, Krishna, is speaking about Himself. The process is maya sakta mana. One has to increase attachment for Krishna. We have got now attachment for material things. We have to divert that. Uh, our position is that we must have attachment for something that is fact. So now, uh, on the bodily concept of life, we have got attachment to this body and anything pertaining to this body, we have got attached. Just like uh, I have got attachment for my wife. Why? There are millions and thousands of women, beautiful women. Uh, I have no attachment for them, but uh, my attachment for my wife, even though she may not be very beautiful, is a fact. Why? Because due to his, to her relation with my body. Uh, and similarly, I have got attachment for my country. I have got attachment for my home. My so many things, because uh, I am thinking I am this body, and anything. Uh, in connection with this body, I am thinking mine. So at the present, my conception of I and my is wrong. Therefore, if we divert that attachment to Krishna, then we can understand Krishna or God perfectly well. Uh, Krishna is just like sun. When there is sun sign, you can see the sun and yourself also. Uh, without sun sign, in the darkness of night, neither you can see the sun nor yourself. The, the process is uh, maya saktamana. Developing Krishna consciousness. Maya Shakta Manat Pratham Jugang Junyan Madasaya. This is the yoga. Yoga means connect. Jugang uh, Junyan. That yoga should be practiced in connection with Krishna. Therefore, he said, Mat Asra. Mat means me or mine. And ashraya means taking shelter. So either uh, you take shelter of Krishna or Krishna's representative. Uh, of course, it is not possible for us 
to take shelter of Krishna, which of Krishna is not present at the present moment, but his representative is there. So one has to take shelter of his representative and practice bhakti yoga, concentrating his mind on Krishna. This is called Krishna consciousness. One has to take shelter of a person whose life is devoted to Krishna and under his direction we have to practice how to develop Krishna consciousness and then Krishna will be revealed. The revelation uh, proportionate revelation is proportionate advancement in seeing Krishna directly.